Hello and welcome to a rather fiery start. This is uh, Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration, which is going to be my uh, latest series where I'm going to investigate the Factorio's Space Exploration mod. The basic idea behind this one is it adds a bit more depth to the game by forcing you to go off to other planets. A bit like Astroneer, if anyone's played that. So there'll be some resources that aren't available on the home planet of Norvis, and generally there's just other places to go and deep space to explore and that sort of thing. Which I think is going to be quite interesting. So we're starting off here. There was um, the, the standard crash landing, and then uh, some sort of firestorm that was caught, caused, has caused all these craters around here. And then it's you know the normal typical Factorio um, slightly slow start where you're digging up things by hand and feeding feeding your um, feeding your mine burner miners and burner uh, and burner uh, what they call smelting machines furnaces. That's the word. Um, stone furnaces mapped by hand as well. So it's it's a slightly slow process. So for, the, for this game's mods, I'm uh, using the following. There's quite a few of them in here. Most of these are required for in some, some level or another for space exploration. So AAI industry, I think, is probably for the vehicles. But that also adds a little bit of extra complexity in here. So we've got things like um, burner science, uh, research labs and um, a few extra things like motors that are required for a lot of stuff. So it makes things a bit more difficult. But we'll see how that goes. Alien biomes allows for the uh, planets to have a bit more of their own personality. So we've got this one's uh, we've got sort of grey, and off to the um, east I can see some snowy areas. So it just makes everywhere look a little bit more interesting. There's more variety in colours, and I think um, space exploration is supposed to hook into that. So different planets should have their own different themes, and they should look sort of recognisably different. So that's going to be quite interesting. Bottleneck is the one that puts those little coloured circles in the um, corner of the each um, each machine to tell you how they're doing. So a green one means it's running fine, yellow means it's full on full and can't output, and red means it's missing some inputs. Nice. That's very useful just to tell where the problems are. Closest first is supposed to make bots build things from close to you outwards, which is nice if you're sort of just working your way along a, a, a blueprint. Um, I'm not 100% convinced it works, but uh, and there maybe there's some sort of clash with angel bots, who knows. Uh, there's a library. Far reach um, means I don't have to get close to everything to, to to, to use it, which is rather nice. It's it's a pain having to. Um, uh, I've just got fed up with having to get up really close to machines to put things in them, and I've got used to it, and it's nice. And I'm keeping it. FNEI is of course the um, the encyclopedia that tells you what you need to make various different things. File is the fully automatic rail layer. Uh, so if I want to build long railway lines, that makes it a bit easier. I had that installed for my Angel Bob's run, but I didn't end up using it in the end. Uh, the grappling gun is apparently very useful for uh, space exploration because it allows you to essentially get your make your way back onto a um, onto a space platform if you fall off it. So it's a, it's a sort of um, a hook shot, like uh, probably a bit like the Just Cause one, really. So there's the burner um, science lab I was talking about. So that's essentially it, it's a science lab, but it runs on coal, so or or wood. It burns things, and uh, you have to so see have the nice plume of flames coming out the top of it. Other than that, this is a fairly standard start. We're just getting the um, lots of different, lots of um, machines up and up and mining, or all of the resources I need. Um, and then, uh, then we have what do we have? Um, uh, where do I get to? Grappling gun. Formatron, I think that's the help system of some sort. Jetpack, I think, is similar to grappling gun, but obviously more mobile. LTN is the logistics train network. Uh, you see me using that in um, in the Angel Bob's run, and that was, uh, and that allows you to have your trains essentially work like um, like logistics robots. So you have stations will offer stuff to the network, other stations will request stuff from the network, and LTN will match the two up together so, so that you can go and get the uh, so things you can get the things you want automatically without having too much fat. Now here we go, I'm automating the construction of um, uh, research packs now, so good thing, yeah, definitely a good thing to do. Uh, manual inventory sorting uh, was because I had that problem with the um, with the assembly vehicle in Angel Bob's where uh, everything was shuffled in its inventory and I could never find anything. So that just sorts inventory and chests and, um, and and vehicles and so on. Robot attrition is another space exploration, not requirement, but it's a good idea to have because there are certain areas where there's there's high magnetic interference or electromagnetic interference. And the idea is that that's bad for your um, assembly robots or your uh, logistics robots. So every so often there's a sort of a tiny chance that they'll just randomly crash because they've been interfered with by radiation. And that t chance varies a little bit depending on what planet you're on. So this should be quite could, should be interesting. It's, it's to discourage you from using um, too many logistics bots on, on planets that aren't tuned to it. Then there's the main space exploration and graphics packs. And finally, uh, 
vehicle snap, which is uh, which will help, which help makes driving a lot easier because it makes your uh, car stick to one of the uh, cardinal directions or sort of subsets of those. So I think I think I've got that set up to 16 directions around the uh, around the compass, and it just makes driving a bit easier because you can make a road and the car will actually stay on it rather than swerving back and forth all over the place because because you're trying to use binary controls and that's terrible, uh, terrible for driving. Okay, so that's enough talking about the mod pack. Uh, let's have a look at what I've actually been doing while we've been talking about that. So I discovered a bit later than I really should have done. The crashed spaceship has a certain amount of resources in it. There's some research packs in there and various bit, and bits of iron and so on just to help you get started. I didn't notice that, so I just started building from scratch. But hey, never mind. Um, as you can see in the um, the bottom set of assembly machines, that one in the middle with the yellow top, that's a that's a motor and is now required because I think this is part of the um, AAI industry mod. It, it, it has these and electric motors as, as um, extra products that you need in order to build, well, almost everything, to be honest. <clears throat> so that's going to be an extra thing to put on buses, an extra thing to have to worry about making and so on. So it's, it's, there's a little bit of ad, ad, added complexity there, but, but not to the same sort of levels as Angel Bob's. It's not, it's not going to be anything like that. <laughs> I hope. I've got um, three research labs trying to run off the one assembly machine here. I think I discovered fairly quickly that the assembly, assembly machine, at least a burner assembly machine, just can't keep up with that. So I'm going to um, try and push for electricity. And here you, you can see if you look at my um, current assembly chain, well, it's a, bit, it's a bit late for that now, you could see the various um, different motors in that that are, that are required. And now we can start building. Now we can start. This is, so this is a burner generator. It's effectively the same as a um, as a boiler, except you don't need a water supply for it as well. So you can just use it to just make electricity from coal, essentially, which is quite nice. I don't know whether it's less efficient than the um, than the than the boilers. I'll have to have a look into that when I get a bit closer. But here we go. I'm um, expanding my science uh, production out a little bit, uh, having to use the. Um, Burner inserters here, so everything at the moment is running off is, is a burner system. So there's a lot of going around and filling filling them up with coal going on, which is what I'm doing at the moment, just grabbing out of the uh, the mines at the top, which I've got in that loop system, so that they all keep each other cold up. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of now trying to upgrade everything to um, to, to powered inserters, so I don't have to uh, worry about putting uh, putting more coal into them as well. And I'd like to get to the point where I'm using um, electric assembly machines as well but that's a, that's a bit further on I think I'm going to have a bit more of a um, a bit more research to do before I can manage that <laughs> so here it is this is the one 100, 100 research packs for that so that's going to take a little while um, but it's but it's very very worth having because this, all of this um, feeding coal into absolutely everything this is just a bit of a pain All right, so here we go. Yeah, I'm going to, I know I'm going to need a lot of bells, so let's start uh, assembling those automatically. The problem, and this, at this point, I'm still feeding all of the machines manually, so I'm taking the iron out of the and, and the copper out of the uh, furnaces, and then putting it putting it into the assembly machines by hand. I haven't got any sort of bus set up yet, but I think that's going to be the next thing I want to work on, and is why I'm building up belts because this, it, it, it's just not practical to be doing all of that by hand. It, it, here we go. Here's the sort of the um, what I was saying about the the various different machines you need. So here we've got cogs going into motors, going into electric motors, and well, with with copper wire going into electric motors. And what am I building? Probably inserters. Yeah. So you need burner inserters, and then normal, and then you can get to, uh, real inserters. So it's it's that sort of chain of of things that you need is a little bit more uh, a little bit more complicated than vanilla, but not quite up to Angel Pops levels. So we should be able to cope with this. It's just, I have to admit, it's a little bit frustrating starting again when you've had a full factory where everything just works and ticks over all by itself to then go back to having to feed everything by hand and do everything manually. Um, oh, this is I decided to actually let's put these on the other side of it because there's a bit more space there and they all need a supply of iron. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's a little bit frustrating um, going from a fully functional factory back to the, sort of the very start again. But hopefully I'll be able to get out of this very early stage and on to we have some automation set up reasonably quickly. And at the moment it's, it's not going too badly. I've got I'm almost at the stage of having having a a sort of a bootstrap bus, should we call it? So the sort of thing you build first in order to get you the stuff you actually need to build your bus. So here we go. There we go. We've got the um, the copper on a uh, on a conveyor belt now. 
that's going down to the wire production facility. What do we have next? Let's have electric uh, electric mining. That's a, yeah, probably a good choice. Of course, I think so. I'm only slightly biased. <laughs> uh, we just need to get the iron onto that um, onto that belt up there now, which means we need to get some um, some inserters built, which means we need some iron and some splitters and things like that. So we'll just see how that goes. <laughs> I'll get yeah. How many? I've only got eight inserters. No, yeah, no wonder I'm struggling a bit. I think some manual feeding of those. Oh no, no, these are enough inserters. Okay. I was going to say some manual feeding of those machines might be required, but no, it looks like it's all up, all up and running now. We just need to keep everything everything full of coal. That's the uh, next challenge. <laughs> And now, yep, iron's coming through, and hopefully that should, should start all these machines running. Um, there's something missing. Oh no, no, it's all—they're all running now. It's just a, just a little bit slow on the um, on the electric with the electric motors. I think possibly, yeah, the uh, the wire production the wire production is being passed over into the um, electric machine quite uh, electric motor machine quite quickly enough. But things generally, yeah, that's that's now working. I could do with a lot more iron, but then that's always the case. Unfortunately, that. Um, ore patch up there isn't isn't very big. I might have to go off and try and get a uh, get some more ore at some point. Uh, get and find another iron area. I can I can get more miners in there of course. I just need to pack them in a bit more closely and then have some sort of filter on the output to make sure I don't pick up any coal. I think it is just to the north of there. And probably the copper as well because those 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 starting patches are all very very close together. Which I mean that's not a prop that's not a bad thing. At the start of the game it's good to have them very close together because it means there's a lot less running around needed. But as you start to get to the slightly more, slightly more automated stage, where you, where you want to have everything, um, where you want to have just a big ranks of, of miners covering the entire ore patch, you start to run into the problems of them pulling a bit up from the adjacent one, and then you need, then you need to have a filter on the outside. Fortunately, they um, updated Factorio ages and ages ago to put in filter insert, uh, filter splitters, so you can just use a splitter to, to break them off. It's really, really easy. Um, also keeping the um, as the assembly machines for the science packs are stocked by hand at the moment. I wonder what these, I, was, I wonder what those purple things were. I wonder if they were gemstones or something. But uh, no, they appear to just be sort of alien biome uh, flora. So that's not relevant. Yeah, let's have a look at military. Because there's that iron patch just up there to the top left. That looks a decent size. So I think I probably. But there's a couple of um, there's a couple of alien. Um, spawners around there so it's going to be a little bit dangerous to head up there so I think it's time to in investigate some more military stuff and try and go in and uh, and liberate the resources should we say and keep the research ticking over as well of course now we've got electric mining drills that's good we can start to um, replace the burner ones and then we won't need to keep stocking them up with with coal and then we can start doing the um, I seem to have forgotten this at this point but then one of the next thing to do is to build up the big sort of um, smelting facilities that are separate from the mine. So rather than having the miners feeding directly into the smelters... Ooh, first fighter attack. Uh, I'd managed to defeat them with a pistol, which is nice, but let's try and, let's build a submachine gun as quickly as we can. Because <laughs> uh, that was difficult. Clear up some of the, um, the ship parts from over here, just in case there's anything useful in them. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so I'll need to build up the, the separate smelting arrays uh, rather and keep them separate from the um, from the miners, because then you can just feed the stuff, feed it down, and have have belts of um, both coal and whatever the ore is. Right, let's attack. That went okay to start with, but oh, run out of ammunition. <laughs> this is going to be yeah. Let's have some better ammunition. So this is going to be rather difficult because at this stage of the game, yeah, the submachine gun is pretty good against um, against biters, or at least at this stage, this this level of biters. But it's absolutely terrible against the, the the spawners, the nests, and if you're on your own, which I obviously am, uh, it's a bit, it's rather difficult. You can't have one person t picking off the biters and another person attacking the nests. So I might have to have a turret as my sort of as my uh, backup. But I don't think I'd develop those by the time I finish this episode. I've, I've got them on the um, list of things I can make. That's good. Another thing I noticed is that you don't heal automatically in this with this mod pack. Um, in in vanilla, once you stop getting attacked, you automatically heal back up to full health again. In this one, you get hurt a little bit like that, and it just you don't heal. It just stays like that. 
They are getting spat at as well. Oh dear, this isn't a good start. Oh dear, I have a bad feeling about this. There we go, yep, yeah, dead. <laughs> so, I think turrets are going to be the order of the day, but I think that's probably going to be about all I'll do for this episode. That was about 45 minutes of playtime, and I think I've described the basics of the game reasonably well. Um, I hope you'll come back and join me for the next episode. I will, at some point, start doing the summary episodes again. Um, but let me know what you think of this sort of post-commentary system, because it's it's relatively easy to do for me, um, it, compared to the sort of the, the going through and massive editing format that I used to do. So I'm quite happy to carry on doing that, or if you prefer the uh, the summary style ones that I, like I was doing with the Angel Bob's run, where I'd play for an amount of time and then come back and tell you what I've done and point at things, um, then I'm happy to carry on doing that as well. So, Or maybe I'll do a mixture of the two. So let me know what you think. Um, I'm uh, always happy to hear suggestions. Maybe I'll start off with the, sort of the post-commentary like this when there's things are happening relatively quickly, and then once the game slows down later on, then I'll start doing the, the, sort of the, um, the summary episodes. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me for the rest of the series and, and that you're enjoying it so far. This has been Lawrence Makes a, a Valiant Start on Space Exploration, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.